interesting for me because the first thing I see um, from my own cultural background is uh, we have a saying, ma pango ma whero kao te te mahi, which uh, literally translated means with, with red and with black the job gets done. And in uh, Māori culture, red is the colour of chiefs, uh, the colour of leadership. Um, black is the colour of, of common people. It's also um, a colour that represents um, uh, infinite possibilities and potential. Um, but also, from a, again, from a Māori perspective, for me, um, red for me also represents a bit of Papa Tuanuku because uh, that's um, Papa Tuanuku is the Earth Mother. Um, we have have a very intimate relationship with Rangi, the Sky Father, and Papa Tuanuku, the Earth Mother. There's some amazing textures in the painting. All the different currents. Almost look like the bones of people. Perhaps it's a foundation. Because um, for me, I, I carry my culture with me. Um, I carry my ancestors with me. I am Dallas Seymour, but I am Dallas Seymour who carries um, you know, thousands of years of history with me all, all the way back to my ancestor Hōturō, who is the captain of the Tainui Canoe, who traversed the Pacific Ocean years and years and years ago, back and forth from the Pacific Islands to Aotearoa. So also, yeah, the textures to me, as I said, look like bones, and as, you, uh, as you're born from the soil, we, uh, we return to the soil, and wherever I walk, um, in New Zealand, um, a lot of the places I walk have I, I have a connection with through um, through intertribal links. So perhaps to me, this is also saying perhaps these are the bones of our of our forebears. The um, the path to our to understanding ourselves is always there. We just have to go back and find those connections. I'm really warming to the painting, actually. I feel a real connection with it. I'd love to watch Ubi actually create this painting just to see what was in his eyes, what was in his face, to see what he drew on for the inspiration and to create this piece. What was the passion? What inspired him? Yeah. What sort of person was he? I'd love to get into his head, just to figure out what, to figure out what he was thinking. There's even some aspects when I look at it. I do, without necessarily being, I guess, truly, uh, I guess, Maori motifs or designs. Sort of see some of that, like in some of our, um, we have an art form called tukutuku, which is weaving. Um, I do see some of that as well. I'd, I'd see some, some almost, I guess, Māori Pacific type moko or tattoo designs. And the longer I stand here, the more, um, the more I feel connected. When I say connected, connected to the piece, connected to um, I guess the depth in the painting. Maybe it's because I feel that it's a it's a representation of Papa Tuanuku. I'd love to have this in my home. <laughs> I'd love to have it in a place where I could walk past it every day. Just for the warmth I, uh, I get from standing close to it. Well, mm. 
It's amazing. It's magnificent work. Can I ask the um the title of the The title is Samurai. Samurai. That Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I can see the yeah. I can definitely see Again, with my limited knowledge of the samurai culture, and elements of that in here. Uh, I've, I've seen some documentaries and read a little bit about the, the loss of the samurai culture, which in some, some contexts is sort of um, is, is similar to, I guess, the, the, the experience in New Zealand with, with our language, which we're trying to reinvigorate now and, uh, and regrow. Um, and I know the um, seeing the faces of some of those, of some of the last people who have kept the samurai culture alive, um, and their their yearning to to just want people to retain the culture and retain the learnings, because once it's gone, it's gone forever. It's amazing how the longer I stand here. <laughs> the more I see, yeah, which is yeah, which is fabulous. So if you look at it from the, if you did look at it from a rugby context, uh, this could be, you know, it could be um, a rugby field, and these could be the maybe the, um, the directions we run. You know, we try and one of the, the simple, I guess, principles of rugby is that you try and confuse the opposition to create space by changing angles, creating doubt in the defensive team's mind so you can create space to run into, um, to create opportunities to, to score tries. I mean, the red is just part of, you know, there are collisions. Sometimes they're meant to be, sometimes they're not meant to be, they're, they're luck, but you do get um, blood spilled on the field. But Māori have always been a, a um, huge contributors to the game and we've always had a um, I guess a different philosophy I mean, they called it running rugby um, but it was also it wasn't just running rugby for the you know just go out and chuck the ball around and hope a great strategist as well I mean if we go back to our, our ancestors in the um, I think it was the second world war the 28th mighty battalion you know amazing strategists and fighters um, and they took that onto the rugby field as well. They took it into whatever they did, you know, really expressed themselves. And we also consider, no, we consider rugby playing an art as well. So, <laughs> and so rugby, rugby and art go together, yeah.